Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den. Legacy Internet Radio. Thank y'all, everybody, who has been listening to us tonight as we go through the night with our featured guest of the night, our sister Shana Latia is up in this joint. Clairvoyant medium. She is helping folks feel whatever it is they need to feel and 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 discuss what's in their soul and inside their spirit. We had a few people already called us up in the first segment. Uh, and so uh, you know it's real when you got your brother Jay in here getting a little bit emotional. So uh, we, appre- we appreciate it. Ain't No Hat Stepping with Marcus J is sponsored by a whole bunch of people. We've been playing uh, the sponsored spots, probably our first one. We're going to play some more later on tonight. We appreciate our sponsors. Thank you to those folks listening to us on TuneIn. Uh, thank you to those folks listening to us on Streamer as well as the folks listening to the replays right now on youtube it's because you guys check us out that's why we continue to do this show if you want to be part of the discussion call us at 804-402-2893 if you want to be a part of the discussion i want to open up the floor to kind of the normal discussions that we have on the show and if you want to get a reading we'll stop and we'll have uh shana talk with you on the air callers um, but what I want to get into is I want to kind of have um, the rest of the crew rejoin us and we'll talk a little bit about what went on in Paris. Uh, I think we all know there was a terrorist attack where we had uh, over 120 people. I think the last last number I heard was 129 uh, people that were killed in the terrorist attacks that ISIS, ISIL, if you're Barack Obama, have uh <laughs> have already taken uh taken credit for it um and, and you know i we're not a news reporting show that's not what we do here and what we do here is we have the discussions that you're gonna have at the beauty salon at the barber shop or in the backyard over some beers and weed and so that's what we want to talk about we want to talk about how you feel about that kind of you know what went on in paris and so uh i'm gonna guess i'm gonna just start on my left we're gonna go across the room dd you up first uh paris what's your thoughts i mean there's a lot of angles i wrote some notes down which i'll probably not get to like you know (laughs) but i want to know what your initial thoughts are about Um, paris truly you know heartfelt sympathies um someone a a couple of people made a post saying you know paris stood with us 9-11 ferguson um definitely definitely feeling something for them right now um not changing my Facebook profile, but um, definitely feeling something for them right now. This it's, it's a little bit more serious than putting a temporary flag over my profile picture for me. So that's my piece. No, I can dig that. I have some feelings about that. We're definitely going to share. Shout out to our sister, Michelle K. She's listening to us right now. Michelle K., what's up, girl? Thank you for checking out your family. Also, special shout out to our sister, Dana Poole Diva, author Charisma, who will be in studio with us next week on the fourth Monday as she does the relationship segment, The Diva Diaries. She's listening to us tonight. She's saying what's up to the crew. Shayna Paris, what's your thoughts? Um, I'm really heartbroken for all of those people, you know, families, um, kids, mothers, wives, everybody who passed away. I'm really heartbroken for that. And heartbroken for all their families who's still alive. Um, my feelings on that is um, I have a lot of Muslim friends and uh, of course terrorists did this. Um, I just do not like the way they're grouping a certain people, a certain group of people who practice a uh, religion and making all of them out to be terrorists. I really don't agree with that. Um, Terrorists are terrorists no matter what religion they follow. As if the KKK were also terrorists and they were Christian. Yes. So that's just my point. Me personally, I'm a spiritualist. I believe in everything. I believe that it all happened. Why not? Monica, what's your thoughts? How you doing, Marcus? It's good to be on here first on your show. Yes, okay. ma'am. I appreciate it. We're going to have some real talk. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. To me, first of all, I think that it's sad to have another line 11. And when people are going to wake up, first of all, it's sad that people was enjoying a life, enjoying fun, having a concert, having fun enjoying life and they said it was a beautiful night and to me I took up French 
you know, as a language. And back in middle school, John Rolfe, man. And just to think that you can just sit out and go to a concert and boom, something just like that can happen. It can happen here in America. Anywhere. Yep. Yep. Anywhere. That's yep. typically. Anywhere. And to me, when is our government going to wake up that it's some real problems? And that it's, it's systematically some got to happen. It's some, somehow these people have some problems. And it got to be, what do you do? These people are going from somewhere. We funding the government just playing, shooting them out the sky, these drunk. These drones, right. just shooting people out of the sky, ain't doing right. it. Right. And not giving these people jobs. Like here in America, we can hide this here. Right. Like in Israel, like I told people back in the 80s and 90s, we didn't have none of this yet. We can hide this here in America. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. Right. And that all those people's lives is gone, and they gone for nothing. Right. So we got to see some kind of way we got to rebuild these people and get them into some kind of program so president obama just had a speech today up on turkey at his g summit tour now what this speech you gonna do and just shooting people out of the sky we got to do something we got to put them in some jobs and and like and, and like she said don't stereotype a certain group and and then we're, now we're going to seal the border, and we, we and they need to have some kind of border control. But we shouldn't be discriminating them because they're Muslim, and that's what's going to happen. Because France did that back when 9-11. I mean, they was going door to door to people's houses. Mm -hmm. And then they was taking them out the house and suspecting them as a terrorist and kicking them out on the streets and stuff like that. It was really bad. Right. So that's what's going to happen now. Right. So... We don't know what we're going to do now. It's going to get rough. But right. you got to do something. I can dig it. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. J., uh, kind of initial thoughts, because we're going to get into uh, certainly more than just initial thoughts. And, uh, Monica, you touched on a few things that uh, I had been thinking about, and so did you, Shana. So we're going to definitely kind of roundtable it more than what we've just done, and we're going to kind of have a discussion like we normally do on Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J. Shout out to our brother, Big Bro Joe. He's listening to the crew and whatnot. Uh, he said that they had a domestic terrorism at his at his job today. <laughs> I know <laughs> that's right. That incident there. I know you that's know, right. He, he called out where he worked, but Lord, if he was here and one of us said where he worked, he would give us the evil glare. So I'm not gonna call out where he worked, but uh, that's what he said. And he also said peace. Uh, he also said peace to the fam. Right. Jay, what's your thoughts, brother? Um, First, I want to, you know, I had some people out in Paris at that particular time when this happened. So it it kind of hit home a little bit. And, you know, I couldn't reach them. You know, the family was reaching out to them. But ultimately, you know, they got in contact with us. So, you know, all my people that was out there is safe and sound. You know, I pray for, you know, all their families, you know, the people that died and suffered through all of this. But I think as a nation, we need to find the root of the problem. You know, why are they attacking what is their motivation? Why are they doing this? And far as like, in my opinion, for trying to defend against it, it's a hard thing to defend against when you have people willing to die for what they believe in. Like these are suicide bombers. These people is gonna kill themselves just to kill you. How do you, as a country, as a people, how do you defend against that? That's my question. Well, my personal opinion is you is you can't. You can't defend against that kind of ideology that, you know, folks have it in their mind that the sworn enemy is the – it's not even really a country. It's democracy. I right. mean, the fact that it happened in Paris shows that it wasn't about a country. It was about it, – it's about a mindset. It's, it's about the ideology of democracy. That's what the war – is against but my question is how do you fight against something that doesn't exist and when i say doesn't exist i mean there's no country you can't declare war against an ideology you can't declare right. clear war against a thought process right. Right. you know what i mean so that's my problem that's what my fear is and you know shana when you mentioned about how people have it in their minds that the religion of islam is evil mm -hmm. 
Right. You know, and that to me is outrageous. I'm not a religious person. I made a personal choice in my 20s to not have a religion. And so I, I feel like I'm in a unique position to be able to look at this kind of objectively because I know historically that Christians have done some of the worst things in recorded history. Absolutely. Yes. And, and, you know, we seem to have selective memory when it comes to Christianity yes. in this country. You know, you, you, you know, you're afraid. Like I had a guy on my timeline who said some really nasty things about Muslims. And I also know that he's a rational guy. He got caught up in his feelings and we had a little blog. We went back and forth. It's out there for those folks who know me. You want to see it? It's there. But, you know, he's a rational, you know, white male who just got caught in his feelings. And after we went back and forth, you know, I wasn't trying to change his mind. That's not what I was doing. But he understood that he went a little bit too far in his rhetoric with regards to saying, let's go kill all these Muslims. Because that's basically what he said. That, that, that's what he said. That's well, it is. You know, and the point that I made, Shana, was the same point that you made when, you know, when we came to this country. You know, we were given, uh, you know, this particular version of Christianity by people who was praying to God that yes. all of the N-words died. Yes. And while we swung it's from the tree, we said, oh, Lord. Yeah, exactly. So what were we before we got here is what everyone needs to look at. Yeah. I mean, I've studied African, you know, African uh, uh, religions and, you know, there's a lot of Christianity in Africa oh, absolutely. prior to us coming here. But there's a lot of Islam as well. I guess the point is religion is religion. It is what it is. It's whatever resonates with your particular spirit. I agree. I agree. And here's here's another thing that I want to kind of get to historically. I mean, you know, I'm, I know I'm gonna catch some heat from this, but I don't really care. The United States is partially responsible for ISIS. I was about. <laughs> I was waiting for you to look at me so I could say what I had to say. Okay, what did you say? It's then? not just the U.S. It's the Western world, and it, it, I'm not a political history major. But we got to go way back here, go back to the Cold War, even before that. The United States, the UK, France, uh, several states, um, countries, I'm sorry, have something to do with this ideology of not all of the Arab countries or all of the Muslim um, followers. But we have something to do with this. We have something to do with this. And they do know why ISIS is attacking. They know why they're attacking. You can't tell me we don't have the means to stop this from happening. You can't tell me France doesn't have the means to stop this from happening. I don't believe that. I find that truly hard to believe. There's some back office stuff going on. There's no way we can't stop what's going on. There's, there's no way we don't have this intelligence ahead of time. It may be that we have it. People don't know what to do with it. Got to fact check, verify before they can make steps. But it's exactly but, what you're saying is exactly true because they said they had intelligence about Paris before it happened. They had intelligence about 9-11 before it happened. Before it happened. Yeah. The, it, they yeah. had intelligence about the first Twin Tower bombing before Back it happened. in 1998, yeah. We have the information. We have it. Have it. Well, I mean. Like, well, that just means they planned all of this well ahead of time. Yes, but the point that I'm making is these governments that are being attacked knew. They know. They know something's happening. There, there's yeah. some reason why this, they're allowing these things to happen. I, I, I don't know. Like, if Obama gave the okay for... Osama bin Laden, um, Saddam Hussein. Well, no, that was Gaddafi. Gaddafi, yeah. Come on. Well, the French, if I'm not mistaken, someone fact checked me, but I think the French was the ones that got Gaddafi. I don't think it was. It, it wasn't us. I know we got uh, bin Laden. Osama bin Laden, and someone that please fact check me on who got Gaddafi. I, th I think that was on the ground when they got him. But I mean, the reality is, you know. I, but yeah. there's another. France has a part to play in in this. Oh, of course. This, this of course. Turmoil with the Muslim groups as well. Well, with the terrorist groups, not mm -hmm. just the terrorists, but with the Muslims. But as I tell well. you what, I do like what France did. Like right when it happened, they they were bombing their asses like the next day. I actually did kind of like that. You know, I, I'm 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 not, you know, someone mm -hmm. that's a, a, a. I guess maybe I'm a fiscal conservative and a 
social liberal, I think is what I am. Uh, because when I saw that, I was like, word. Because yeah, there was no talking they, about yeah, it. We there was, it. We got to you know, go to Congress. Yeah, it wasn't um, none of that. I think they called in like everybody in the French uh, cabinet. I think this is the first time in like over 100 years that they did this. And everybody came in like the next day yes. on Saturday. And then on Sunday, they was already, well, yesterday, they was already bombing places in Syria, uh, which I, I, I do want to kind of talk. There's so much to, to, to get to uh, in, this, in this. But see, that's the thing. Yeah. It, y- y- when you start helter skelter bombing, you're. Oh, yeah. You know, innocents are involved. It's a casualty. It's a casualty. Of, I know, it's a casualty I know. of they war. Have I mean, nothing to do with they, any of this. I mean, three thousand people died on nine eleven that didn't have anything right. to do with you're it. Right. And I would be willing to bet money that everybody in this room, if you didn't know somebody, you knew somebody that knew somebody. Didn't know somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That died. You know, on nine eleven, which I sometimes, again, there's so many angles in this I want to get to, but I sometimes scoff at folks that, you know, are so up in arms about terrorism in this country when the real terrorists are middle-aged white christian men those are the ones that's going in schools and going into malls and shooting up stuff like when we had 9 11 here that was crazy but i mean we've had two terrorist attacks here in this country one in 1998 and one in 2001 you know but they're calling the president the current president barack obama weak when it was the previous administrations plural that created the the climate for this to even happen i mean so i mean i want i i guess i want to have that discussion especially i'm throwing a lot of stuff out here i want you guys to jump in here but they talking about bringing sixty five thousand syrians into this country let's talk about that i i'm not one for that i'll be honest with we you. are I, I'm not, so I'm not. magnanimous to others yeah man i ain't for that we Great. have people here in the United States of America that our government won't even take care of. These people didn't take, they didn't take care of the people in Katrina. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Granted, uh, it was a different administration. It was, what's but the woman's regard, name? The Barbara, is, Barbara Bush said them people was better off because they can now go someplace that's not poverty stricken. That's yes. what she said. You know, the former first lady of this country said that. I would like to know if they are going to send any money to Flint, Michigan. Because of their oh, jacked that, up that water. Water. Thank you. We talked about that on the show a couple of weeks ago. Are they wow. going to send any money to help out the president's hometown where they keep killing people in Chicago? We spend yeah. so much Can money. Can we talk about that? Helping yeah. other countries. And, man, I, I am a, a, my empathy for these people. I feel for them. I really do. But when are we going to start taking care of our people, I, too? I got, I got you. I, I tell you what outrages me. What outrages me is we send three, would it be, billion dollars every single year to Israel. We just write them a fat check, and don't nobody ask no questions what that money's for? Never. What? What about the $300 million of weapons that got lost in Yemen, and don't nobody want to ask no questions where them weapons are? Like, come on, man. Hmm. And I'm supposed to get all upset, you know, about what happened in Paris. I, I am upset in the sense that innocent people died. I am because that is very sad. And anytime somebody dies, it's a sad thing. And I think that we need to be sensitive to that. Yes. However, you know, I took some heat in social media because I think those folks who are changing their profile pictures, it's a little bit premature there. Like I get, (laughs) I I, I get that you want to be at the front of showing support. (laughs) But for me personally, I, I took a little bit of issue with it, and it wasn't so much about. Jay, go ahead. You had a lot of people. <laughs> you had a whole lot of people. All right, Jay, I changed you want, you, mine. You, well, we can talk about that. I like it. We we we, we can we can talk about that. But we had we had a lot of people who wanted to add about like, Kenya and what happened in Africa as you know their reason for opposition. But you know and what? I, and I and I I understand that. I, I understand that. Yeah. But for me, and it's just my personal opinion. It was more about the Facebook fad yes. than anything else. Yeah. And like she said, she liked the color. And people were like, oh, I like the color. Yeah. So but they, I, really, I really felt for friends. So like right. when anybody dies, I'm empathic, so I feel. Right. It just really crushed my heart that all of right. those people died. Like that's, that's my disposition right. of the whole situation because I'm not into all the politics and all that. But for as those people who lost their lives, their families, everything. It just really hit my heart. Hit home. Like, I have kids. What if that happened here? 
and it and it caused it even when you, when they changed the profile picture, it caused the uprise because it did. people was like, you know, y'all <laughs> over there praying for Paris. What about Baltimore? You what, know, yeah. what about New Orleans? So it, it it caused the uproar, and and I think that's what they wanted by doing that. I think they well, wanted, it worked. It worked. People arguing yeah, on Facebook uproar. about yeah. changing a profile picture. It's yeah. come yeah. on. It's way the more division, serious than that. The man. division that I mean, I think that everything that happens, everything that happens, creates a division. And once that division is created, the problem gets bigger. You know what I'm saying? Like, so there is a division. Like, you can have your opinions, but I think the way we go about expressing our opinions goes a long way towards making the problem even bigger. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I personally thought it was silly to do the, the, the change of the profile. Like, I got Facebook in front of me, and it's a whole page full of people who change their pictures. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's fine. That's what you want to do. But to, right. just my personal opinion, it, it was just it was a little hokey for me. It just wasn't my thing. But I understand the folks that that that, that wanted to do it. For those folks that said... You know, you know, what about Africa? And I was one of them in the beginning, but I had an opportunity to kind of step back and think about it. You know, you can't really regulate who folks want to feel empathy exactly. yes. towards. You know, yeah, if, you if somebody wants to feel. You can't tell nobody how to feel. You can't tell nobody how to feel. You can't tell somebody who to pray for. And I, and I am guilty of this because I was in my feelings about it <laughs> in the beginning. And I was mad. I, honestly, I, I, you know, I'll be honest. And I'm one of those people I can self-analyze. And I was angry. Because I didn't see the same kind of support for black businesses, for group economics, mm -hmm. for Missouri, for Baltimore, for, you know, you know, Oscar Grant in Oakland. You know what I'm saying? And we can name names. I used to name, the, you know, the, the 20 previous names of black people killed unarmed by police for about three or four or five shows in a row, I was naming 20 names. I would take a moment, take five minutes to just name the names to make the point that it's so many. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so you had a lot of uh, overzealous conscious people of which I happen to be one of them, and I and, I, and, I, and okay. I am, and I'm checking myself. I have a lot of overzealous, conscious friends, and I'm and I'm checking myself. I, I enjoy it; it's great. And, and I'm checking myself, but it was a lot of us who was really pretty ticked off, Monica. What do you think? Yeah, I feel the same way, Marcus. Because where's Americanism? We just had the guy here in Virginia, the guy that got unarmed in Lynchburg. In Lynchburg, mm -hmm. and um, no, it was South Boston. South Boston, yeah. Um, got tased 21 times. And you saw it on video. Yep, handcuffed, no attention, no attention whatsoever. We got stuck here, real in Virginia. And I was with the NAACP, and nobody stands up and say anything about it. And where's the Americanism standing up for here, for stuff here that's going on in here? People play it like it's a blind eye. And, if, it, and nothing with the French people, but sometimes we need to stand up for some real stuff that's going on here. Because we got a lot. That's why I went up to 1010, went up to Justice or else. And a lot of things I don't agree with Brother Farrakhan, but I do agree with certain issues that we play to a black issue about we get riled up for a few minutes and then, boom, we gone. Yeah. I mean, the essence of that is, you know, we, we got a whole lot of moments, mm -hmm. but we ain't got enough movements. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of times our people like to be a part of something. And that's understandable. And ain't nobody judging somebody that wants to be a part of something. But I think it, it becomes more about what are we going to do together? Because ultimately, nothing, and I mean nothing, is going to happen unless we work together. Like, mm -hmm. seriously, we got to work together. And we've shown that we can do it. Mm -hmm. We've shown by, and I made a personal choice not to go to 1010. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I've kind of been there and done that with the whole marching mm -hmm. thing because I realized that I can send a tweet out, and if I got the right people who pay attention to me i can get far more done in a yep. tweet than than you know a, a hundred thousand people mm -hmm. dropping a hundred dollars in the town that we already ain't digging mm -hmm. and so that was kind of what my thought process mm -hmm. was that with, with that and that's coming from someone who's marched with farrakhan mm -hmm. in the past i've marched with jackson i've marched with mm -hmm. with everybody um but i just think that we us mm -hmm. we have to direct that energy towards working with each other if we can do that i mean gosh man our problems could be so solved man it, it just it really can't the problem is we don't trust each other 
Yep. But see, that's the, that's yep. Well, I did it because with my show, I wanted to take my viewers to a different angle. Now, I did not stomp on their behalf, but this was my first time going as me seeing it through my eyes and my vision. And that I did not want somebody to say that I'm just the typical type of person to say I'm just going along with the fad. And I, you, are, you are right, because the typical people that just go just to be going to have a party. And I've been through a whole lot of stuff, and I've been fighting things on my own. I took on the government by myself. Okay. I went on government cases. I won <laughs> cases by myself. So you're talking somebody that won cases and lost cases, that went on EEOC cases, <laughs> that took on, on the government and died three times and came back, and oh. did a whole lot of stuff that some people that didn't do. And I even riled up people in my own NAAC cheat job. I said, man, we ain't playing no bingo around here. No. Baby, it's, it's, time. Time to, it's time to do some action, some footwork. It's time for you to go to law school. <laughs> yeah, no Somebody doubt. said it. Look, oh, I no, know. I'm telling her she needs to go to law school. That's the medium telling you that. Now. I know. <laughs> they wanted me to do it. I'm actually Girl, doing a PhD. Playing. I know. They go wanted me to do it. it. I know. I'm you doing my PhD. I know. They, I took we on my attorney. To I know. I went on and took on my bad attorney. You <laughs> lying. Let me tell my story. Off. No, I can <laughs> see. I can see. I can see the fire in your eyes right now. No, I took her. If look, she don't go see, past I know. Bar. I know my grandmother talking to her. That's what it is. <laughs> I had a house case. I had I had a, this bad attorney. And I took him to the Virginia State Bar, man. This man that messed me up terrible. A black attorney, man. Don't get one. one of them, one of them, and he was a pastor. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell it all. This is real talk. <laughs> Whoa. Yes, ahead, sir. He did me wrong. Yes, sir. And, um, man, it was messed up. I had, I, had a good, I had a good cases, man. And it broke my heart. And I was like, I know this man didn't do me like this. I had a house case, a medical case. A woman that almost died at 33 was in a medical-induced coma. Skin fell off. Um, had, had to learn how to walk and talk again. And it's Jive Time Turkey. <laughs> you hear me? Jive I, I ain't time. even going to call his name out. This Jive Time his, Turkey. What's his initials? <laughs> JMS. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm going to put that in Google. Jive Turkey. Don't go boy. to him. <laughs> Give me a pen. <laughs> And he said he was an attorney, man. Said the man said he was legit. Lied. He lied on his credentials, right? And said, oh, I can take on your case, right? Lied to his teeth. And I went to the Virginia State Bar. And these, man, these, these people said, this, this woman persistent. I was. I gave them the most thorough exhibits and everything about it. And I kept telling this lady, I said, give me justice, and she was a wonderful lady. And she said, Ms. Ball, this is all we can do. But they did the best they could do. And, but I gave him, they gave him discipline. But I was persistent. And everybody's told me, and even my dentist, she said, Ms. Ball, I thought, she said, oh, Monica, I thought you was going to go to law school. The way you put the heat on that man. Because he screwed you up. Because you supposed to have been compensated. But you know what? I know. But you, you, you don't have to go to law school for that. It, all people need to do is be persistent. No, 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 honey. Be no, persistent. Honey. Let me tell you something. When you're going against these judges, this is what I learned, huh? You have to have your stuff right. Yes. In the legal system here, you have to know your P's and Q's. This man didn't have his stuff right. When you walk in that courtroom in the Eastern District courtroom, mm -hmm. you, right. you got to have your credentials. This man, you got to have your P's and Q's because you're going against some people, ancestors. Now, you hear me? Mm. The, 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 the Henry the Eighth, the Henry, the, the <laughs> John Henry, the Girl, fourth. Stop naming them now. All don't. of them fives and sixes stop and sevens. Yeah, we know exactly And, and here going. you going in, Monica L. Ball, baby. <laughs> They're going to already going to put you at the bottom of the list. Yep. When yep. you come in there, you got to have your suitcase. You got to look professional. Yes. And you got to have look tight. And you got to have your stuff together. It got to be together. And you got to know. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to call this one judge out. Judge John F. Gimney. This man was fighting for my case. I ain't going to cry. But he, he, but he tried to fight for this African-American. He tried to save my case. But he couldn't. 
because the man didn't have his stuff right. Mm. He tried. Mm. He tried. Right. And this was what President Barack Obama, this one thing President Barack Obama did right. He appointed a judge. And this is why this election is important. Yes. That's why I want these African Americans. Yes. Don't be sitting at home. You need to get out and vote I'm for just, this president. I'm just, I'm just glad to hear that I'm not the yeah. only one saying those things, you know. So I yes. appreciate I appreciate yeah. your story. And don't and I appreciate don't just I appreciate vote your for fire. anybody right. either. Yeah. You you you, you got to do your. You yeah. need to check who yeah. you're voting for. Don't just vote for anybody. Yeah. Vote, everybody vote. voting for them. exactly. Yeah, vote your spirit. Yeah, I, I, I can tell you from my my experience just from 2007. You know, I remember I did my due diligence and I knew in 2007 that Barack Obama was probably going to win. And I remember right. during the primaries, you know, people was like, he ain't going to be no, you know, Republican and he's black. And we talking about, look, we had Herman Cain and we had Jesse Jackson and we had Al Sharpton. And they wasn't Barack Obama. No, right. I remember, you know, before Iowa, which I don't get Iowa, but everybody says that Iowa is kind of the big ticket. Yeah, and I remember I when. I don't get it either. In New Hampshire, I don't get it, but it is what it is. But I remember when going in, it was before they come to Virginia to vote, and I remember saying, you know, I, I like this dude. And plus he had already spoken at the Democratic Convention right. yeah. prior. Yeah. 2002. 2004. 2003, 4-4. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I remember saying, and I remember a whole bunch of black people saying, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton. He ain't going to win. He's black, so I'm not going to vote for him. So you're not going to vote for him because he's black? you a black person. You're not right. going to vote for him because he's black because he can't win. So you're only going to vote for somebody who right. you think can win, not who you think should, should win. win. Right. That's that's a problem. Ain't yes. no half-stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. If you want to be a part of the discussion, you want to talk about Paris, you want to get a reading from our sister Shana Latia, or if you just want to hear your voice <laughs> on the radio, call us at 804-402-2893. Jay? I want to give a shout-out to Janelle. She um, just texted me. She said she can't talk and listen at the same time because she's listening on the phone, so she just texted me right quick. She said, we as a people need to be more proactive as a unit. Paraphrasing the Bible state, where there is division, there will be destruction. We are, the, we are a divided people do things, she said, we are the divided people. We do things are drifting and shifting, and we are um, drifting and shifting slowly and fast. I can dig it. I can dig it. Ain't no half-stepping. We're Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. We're going to take another break, and when we come back, we got more show, y'all. We ain't going to tell y'all what we're going to talk about. That's our business. It'll be your business on the other side of this break. I got Didi. I got Shane. I got Monica. I got Jay. And yours truly, the guy who likes to hear his own voice. And you know, I have Stephen Marcus. Jay, be back in a few minutes. Y'all stay with us. Prepare for your future. Purchase your term, whole life, and mortgage insurance by license.